our, our scholars. Now he talks about the birth of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Mawliduhu bi al Amina that the Prophet Sallallahu was born in Mecca, his Mawlid. And we know that the Mawlid is very controversial. Um, I celebrate the Mawlid in, 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 in this year in Boston. Mashallah, we had around 600 people in our masjid at ISBCC making salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi But there's a few things I want to point out about the Mawlid celebrating the birth of the Prophet Number one is, it's not a bid'ah, it's not an innovation. The word bid'ah means something that has no fundamental source. It has no sourcing in, in the sacred text. But Imam Ibn Hajar al Haythami, Wal Asqalani, and also Imam al Suyuti, they mentioned that there are a number of sources to prove we should honor this day. For example, the Prophet used to fast the day of his birth, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, every Monday, because that was the day I was born, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam al Hafid ibn Rajab al Hanbali said that shows us we should honor that day uh, that he was born, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two, the Prophet ﷺ, he made aqiqah for himself. He's the only person we know of that had aqiqah done for him twice. One was done by his grandfather, and then one was done by himself. And Anas ibn Malik says, as related by Imam al bayhaqi in his Sunan, with a good isnad, فَقَدْ عَقَّ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ مَرَّتَيْنِ That the Prophet ﷺ, فَقَدْ عَقَّ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ بِمَكَّةً Afwan, that the Prophet made the aqiqah for himself, in Mecca and in, uh, in Medina, excuse me. And Imam al Suyuti radiallahu anhu said that this is min babi tamthi, like the Prophet is showing us how to honor him. So, some that we should honor the day of his birth. The third is that the majority of the fuqaha from all of the mathahib agree that celebrating the Mawlid is a commendable act, is a commendable act. It's not a sunnah, but it's something that if we do it with the proper niyyah will be rewarded. And it's impossible for us to believe that those four schools, right, thousands and thousands of scholars would agree on dalala. The Prophet said, لا تجتمع أمتي على الضلالة, that my community will never agree on misguidance, right? So instead of saying this is an innovation, we should say أمر مختلف فيه something that people differ over. And if there's a difference amongst the scholars, then there's rahmah, there's mercy and compassion. So the Shaykh, he says, مَوْلِدُهُ بِمَكَّةَ الْآمِنَةِ that the Prophet from his birth was in Mecca, وَفَاتُهُ بِطَيِّبَةِ الْمَدِينَةِ and that he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though we believe he's alive in his grave, that he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in Medina. And then he continues, أَتَمَّ قَبْلَ الْوَحْيِ أَرْبَعِينَ that before revelation was sent to the Prophet ﷺ, he was 40 years old. Like he reached the age of 40 right before the revelation came to him sitina, And that his age, he lived past 60. ﷺ. Can you imagine in 23 years what he accomplished? SubhanAllah, some people, they won't accomplish anything their entire lives, right? But our beloved Prophet وسلم, in 23 years, he was able to accomplish a number of things And what we learn from that is the importance of time. We should take advantage of time. We should have goals and objectives. We should trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should increase our, our, our connection to Allah in perfecting what we do on a daily level.